Hello, Dajaho. Hello, Dajaho. We'll see Matsuda Yasuhiro. Thank you for coming today. Um, <clears throat> so, thank you very much for the nice intro, uh, introduction, uh, Professor Yu. Uh, <clears throat> okay, it's my great honor to be a speaker uh, uh, in this seminar. Okay, so I'll be talking about the um, um, on the uh, vanadium dioxide uh, in ultra high magnetic fields, uh, which shows an uh, insulator metal transition uh, in very high magnetic fields. So these are collaborators, uh, ISSP University of Tokyo and uh, RIS uh, Okayama University. Okay, so uh, first I'd like to uh, give you an introduction of this compound briefly, and then uh, show an experiment techniques and uh, sorry <clears throat> and show you the results uh, uh, of the experiment and i will discuss about the uh, insulator metal transition uh, of this compound and uh, and then summarize my talk <clears throat> okay so as you know um vanadium dioxide is an, uh, one of the most studied correlated insulator let me sorry <clears throat> Wait a minute. Uh, okay, and in high temperature, uh, it is a um, metallic, and uh, the structure is a lutein uh, structure. Um, at at uh, around room temperature, it un undergoes the phase transition from the metallic to <coughs> insulating state, and at the same time. Uh, the point is that the the uh, vanadium ions uh, forms a dimer, and then the uh, structure, crystal structure, uh, deforms, and the symmetry becomes low, and then from lutein to uh, monoclinic, a structural phase transition uh, takes place at the same time. Okay, so the and the so then the, after the dimerization, uh, as you expect, the uh, molecular orbital uh, forms uh, between the two vanadium ions. So then uh, it is expected that the ground state is realized by this formation of the uh, molecular orbital. And uh, you know that the, uh, the electrons uh, um, in this ground state cause the, uh, the, the spins of the electrons are opposite. I mean, the, you mean, I mean that the singlet ground state, uh, we have singlet ground state, and actually we have the no magnetic state at low temperature after the phase transition. So, in the, uh, so then you may think about, you may uh, think that this compound is just an band insulator because uh, <clears throat> the electrons are localized in a, a molecular orbital and then the, the insulating nature appears. So it's very, it seems to be very simple. But however, after the discovery of the this um, metal insulator transition of vanadium dioxide, uh, some of the people, some of the people uh, claim that uh, it is not uh, just an band insulator. It can be, or it should be an amount insulator. Uh, it is because uh, we have an, uh, another uh, uh, metastable state. Uh, as an um, uh, at low temperatures, so we call this um, phase uh, M two phase monoclinic two. So another mo monoclinic phase uh, is known to be uh, realized uh, with an, uh, by a slight modification of the uh, crystal lattice by sub sub substitution of another uh, element or some slight uh, stress. And the point is that. Although this phase is very close to the original uh, monoclinic insulating phase, uh, we have the uh, uh, vanadium ions uh, that don't form the um, 
dimer. I mean that uh, not all the uh, vanadium ions form the dimer. So we have uh, actually we have a uniform chain uh, in this M2 phase. But still, it is known that this phase is insulating. So it means that the dimerization uh, is not necessary to realize an uh, uh, insulating uh, nature. So then uh, they claim that this, um, although we have a dimer dimerization, but it can be a side effect. And the intrinsic origin of the insulating uh, nature is an uh, uh, electronic correlation. So then they think that this compound is an uh, motor insulator. So another uh, reason why they think this is an uh, motor insulator is that the energy gap here uh, is much larger than the uh, energy corresponding to the transition temperature. It is a more than one order of magnitude larger. So we can't ex explain uh, this uh, phenomenon using a single band a picture, single electron picture. So we need an, uh, many electron uh, um, effect to explain uh, this phenomenon. Okay, so <laughs> still even now, uh, after the discovery, uh, after 40, more than 40 years after the dis discovery of the insulator metal transition of this, the vanadium dioxide, we have uh, many, many papers uh, that frame the different uh, mechanism. So you, <laughs> there, um, I didn't put a very recent one, but still uh, the new uh, theory uh, appears. So maybe you can take a screenshot to memorize uh, these many papers. So anyway, so this is a very controversial, still very controversial issue. Uh, I mean, the insulator metal origin of the insulator metal transition of this compound. So my idea is that a uh, magnetic field can shed a new light on this um, uh, controversial issue. Uh, because uh, as I told you, uh, the ground state uh, can be an, a, a singlet state. So if you have an, a strong enough magnetic field, uh, you can collapse uh, this state. I mean that by crossing the uh, these uh, triplet and the singlet state. So then uh, magnetic field can collapse the, the ground state of this situation. So you can have the, uh, observe the uh, uh, suppression of the uh, insulating phase and the may, metallic phase may appear. But if the system is uh, described uh, as using a single band Hubbard model, for example, the insulating nature is determined by an electronic correlation U and which is much should be much larger than the magnetic field exchange uh, energy. So if the vanadium dioxide is a motor insulator, which can be explained by a single band Hubbard model, uh, <clears throat> the magnetic, even magnetic field uh, controls the spin. Uh, we don't expect that the um, very strong effect on the insulating state. Maybe insulating nature uh, remains after the uh, uh, spin saturation. So it's uh, so I mean that the if we find a uh, strong effect on uh, magnetic field effect on the uh, insulating state of this compound, uh, we can say that at least the um, uh, the a single band Hubbard model is not a good model for the, explaining this uh, uh, phenomenon. And uh, and also of course if. It is very exciting and interesting how, how if it, it is possible to observe the metallic phase uh, to induce an insulator metal transition by magnetic field because I, it looks like the energy gap is too large compared to the, uh, the DIMA effect uh, by the magnetic field which we can generate because the 2.5 electron volt corresponds to the uh, uh, 20. Uh, 1,000 uh, tesla, and um, it is much, much larger, uh, very large, extremely large magnetic field. So may, it, if we need this magnetic field, it is no chance to observe this phenomenon. But we have, I think we have a chance because on a uh, transition temperature, uh, if the magnetic field uh, energy uh, compared to the uh, 
uh, function temperature, I think that uh, the required magnetic field is still high, but I, I think it is possible. So why don't we apply the magnetic, strong magnetic field and see what happens? Okay, so then, <clears throat> okay, let me um, move on to the explanation of the uh, material. Okay, so I introduced a vanadium dioxide, but the transition magnetic transition temperature is as high as a room temperature. So if uh, it, of course, it is quite nice if we control the um, transition temperature and make it lower because uh, may we may we will have a more chance to observe the magnetic field effect. So uh, I am interested in this compound. Uh, the, uh, the some of the vanadium site is replaced by a tungsten ions. So we can control the uh, transition temperature from 300 Kelvin around 100 Kelvin. And uh, this phase diagram is also uh, interesting. You see that the uh, the ground state uh, change from insulator metal and then again insulator. So it's a very interesting phase diagram. But today I'd like to focus only uh, on uh, this region, uh, and then I'll talk about uh, this compound with a very a small contents of the um, <clears throat> tungsten ions. Okay, so uh, we, but uh, I, I think we need an ex uh, very high magnetic fields. So we can generate uh, very high magnetic fields as high as 1000 Tesla uh, by using the electromagnetic flux compression. So uh, it is, uh, the, uh, so then I'll explain. Uh, by this method, uh, magnetic flux here is compressed by the uh, metallic tube called liner. Uh, we first we generate magnetic flux by uh, conventional wire wound coils, and then uh, we inject the uh, very high uh, current as high as four million ampere into the uh, primary coil, and uh, the uh, liner is located. Uh, in inside of the uh, primary coil, and when a very fast primary current is induced uh, going through the coil, the secondary current on the uh, surface of the liner is induced. Then uh, very strong force uh, appears and it pushes the uh, uh, liner, and the liner uh, is sh shrinks with a very high speed, uh, as higher than two to four kilometer per second. And then the, the inner area of the liner uh, becomes smaller and smaller. So then the density of the flux becomes very high. And uh, then the, you can get the uh, very high magnetic fields at the end. At the end. But <laughs> uh, this is, uh, we put the very high current and uh, put the very, uh, in, uh, very relatively large energy is, uh, is put into the coil and finally, the, the energy uh, is consumed as, uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, by a relatively large um, uh, explosion. So the, you are, you, the uh, uh, unfortunately, the, the samples and the uh, cryogenic systems, uh, all, all of the everything uh, will be uh, lost. It's a very disadvantage, but uh, you can go to the highest uh, magnetic field in the world. <clears throat> Okay, so uh, eh, eh, several years ago, uh, I ordered, uh, I asked the, some company to make a uh, computer graphics to how to generate, to explain how to generate a thousand Tesla using our machine. So we use the, uh, the energy source is an um, uh, capacitors. So we have a large uh, capacitor bank and uh, to control the uh, energy, uh, we, to current, we, we have uh, this uh, uh, air gap switch, and uh, we collect the energy to the collector plate. And for the initial field, we need the seed field coil. Okay, so now we are uh, uh, the energy is stored in the capacitors, and uh, the cable transfers the energy to the collector plate. 
And before the, the injection of the energy, we produce an, uh, magnetic flux by an, uh, a seed field coil. And then the primary current is goes through and the uh, liner shrinks and then the density of the flux uh, increases very much. Okay, <clears throat> so this is a way how to uh, we can how how we can generate uh, the thousand Tesla. Okay, this is a uh, the uh, the, uh, the computer graphics, and uh, this is the uh, the uh, movie of the uh, inside of the protection chamber. I mean, the he around here the very high field is generated. So. Let me show you now. Maybe. Okay, at this moment, the very high magnetic field is generated and uh, the, all of the measurement uh, is done in this uh, very short time. One more time. <clears throat> okay, something like this. Okay, so uh, as you can see, this is an, a relatively uh, um, uh, violent <laughs> uh, experiment, and uh, and uh, you may uh, imagine that there are many many uh, large electromagnetic noise and the mechanical uh, vibration or something. So yes, uh, it is very tough uh, environment to for uh, to to measure uh, the. Uh, to make a measurement with high precision, but the point is that uh, the the uh, the destruction or explosion uh, occurs just after the generation of the magnetic field. So then, uh, before the uh, such an, a very violent um, uh, situation, uh, we can uh, uh, measure the, the uh, several physical quantities with relatively high precision. And the most uh, prominent, uh, most suitable uh, technique is, uh, of course, an uh, optical measurement. Absorption and further rotation, uh, some other laser sp spectroscopy or something, uh, because we can uh, avoid the uh, uh, electromagnetic noise uh, by this uh, technique. Because an uh, 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 light and uh, electric uh, signal, it cannot be coupled directly. Okay, so but uh, you know that uh, some of the uh, material uh, uh, we don't we can't apply the optical uh, measurement. So electrical resistivity is most maybe in most of the case are required. And actually, we have now developing. Uh, the technique, and uh, the, we we already published a nice paper uh, using the uh, high frequency modulation uh, electromagnetic electrical resistivity measurement technique. Uh, so we can uh, 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 measure the electro, electro resistivity, but of course, if possible, the optical measurement is much more uh, suitable. And also, re recently, we can make a magnet restriction experiment. So we, we can measure the, uh, the, the uh, uh, lattice change rather directly in very high magnetic field. And the magnetization and directly constant measurement are now under development. So this study, in this study, I will introduce the uh, uh, optical experiment. And we do the, uh, we did the magnet absorption experiment uh, in the destructive uh, ultra high magnetic fields using the electromagnetic flux compression. I just uh, show you uh, in my presentation. Okay, so uh, first I, I will tell you the, about our uh, sample we measured. And these are the uh, thin film of um, uh, vanadium uh, dioxide with small contents of uh, uh, tungsten. And uh, this, these are the uh, very thin film, and uh, each film as uh, this um, shows that uh, this um, uh, transition temperatures. Okay, so nice thing is that uh, uh, at the metal insulator transition, uh, this sample shows the uh, distinct uh, significant uh, change in their optical absorption spectra. This is a, a 
this figure shows you the uh, mag uh, temperature variation of the ab absorption spectrum. And you see that at the near infrared region here, the, at the high temperature, uh, we have a very strong absorption. It's a metallic phase. And with decreasing temperature, the significant decrease of the transmission absorption uh, uh, is, uh, is observed. So then uh, uh, if we, okay, so for the high field experiment, we uh, use a laser, uh, laser at these wavelengths. So if when we look at the in, uh, absorption intensity or transmission at this uh, photon energy, uh, you can detect the uh, insulator to metal transition uh, very nicely by optical uh, technique. So we utilize uh, this uh, effect uh, to, to, to study the magnetic field induced uh, insulator metal uh, transition. Okay, in more detail, uh, before going to the uh, result of the high magnetic field experiment, I'll tell you a bit more about the change in the uh, absorption spectra. So at low temperature, uh, we have we, the gap opens. So then we can uh, find a finite value. At a finite value, we have an absorption band. Uh, this uh, D and D2 pi star uh, absorption here. And with the increasing temperature, the gap uh, gradually uh, closes. And then the, uh, the, uh, this uh, shift of the peak energy uh, uh, corresponds to the uh, gap closing. And then and, uh, another point is that uh, at the room temp at high temperature, the metallic phase up, when a metallic phase appears, the uh, through the uh, uh, term, through the uh, absorption due to the free electron uh, uh, considerable uh, at this region. So we can uh, uh, analyze the change in the absorption uh, semi-classical uh, way uh, through the model. It's a sim very simple model, but uh, uh, we can successfully uh, explain the uh, resistivity, uh, 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 temperature variation of the resistivity using the parameters uh, obtained from the, the optical uh, spectrum. So I can say that the uh, this observing the uh, optical pro optical response at this uh, energy position uh, can directly uh, reflect the uh, that metallic metal insulator transition uh, of the vanadium dioxide. <laughs> okay, so then let's go to the uh, high magnitude experiment. Okay, I'll tell you a bit uh, 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 details of the uh, measurement. So our uh, magnetic field is very high and very uh, high speed. So then the uh, uh, derivative of the uh, magnetic field with respect to the temp uh, time, uh, dBdt, is very high. So then we can't use any uh, metallic part, uh, metallic thing inside of the uh, uh, magnetic field. Uh, if very thin or uh, very uh, thin wire is okay, but if you put in your uh, the bulk metal into the uh, uh, magnet, the <laughs> very uh, disaster is happen. So uh, you 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 break uh, your uh, um, uh, uh, the the uh, the part of uh, the, such a metal is uh, easily. Um, uh, um, uh, evaporated and uh, the, some explosion is happened. So anyway, you can't you can't put any metal in, into it. So we made an, uh, our uh, cryostat to, to uh, cool the sample. We make an uh, uh, cryostat uh, by an uh, uh, plastic. So uh, then uh, we the, we use the uh, helium, cold helium gas to cool the sample. And uh, <laughs> it's it's class that is disposable. You know, the only the one measurement it, it disappears. But anyway, um, uh, we make this and uh, into it uh, we put uh, two optical fibers. And the uh, sample here is in, uh, sandwiched by two optical fibers. And we put this here, that very small uh, uh, pickup coil, 
uh, to measure the uh, magnetic field. And we put this uh, cryostat and the sample and the uh, optical fibers into the uh, coil. About, and the, and the, in, in the coil, we put, before that, we put the chamber here into the coil. This is uh, actually the uh, vacuum chamber. And uh, so vacuum is necessary for this experiment. And one reason is to obtain the uh, uh, low enough temp temperature. Uh, we have, we need a vacuum uh, insulating phase, uh, insulating layer. And another point, another reason why we need the vacuum is that uh, the liner here, we put this liner into it, into the coil afterwards, but uh, the, if, when the liner shrinks with very high speed, the, uh, the, the shock wave uh, uh, happens, occurs. So the shock wave, uh, if the air transmits the shock wave, uh, the such a shock wave breaks your sample. So we we need we need a vacuum uh, to avoid such a uh, situation. Okay, all right. So the uh, um, to prevent the uh, breaking of the in things inside by a shock wave, we need a vacuum. Okay, so this is a, a setup of the uh, experiment, and. Uh, <clears throat> Okay, here the, we put the coil here uh, inside of the explosion proof box because we, to prevent the, uh, 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 the, the uh, explosion uh, uh, go outside. So, and uh, we have an uh, energy capacitor here and uh, we connect the, the energy source uh, to the uh, coil by an, uh, 30 meter long, uh, 480, uh, coaxial cables. And uh, so this, uh, we have three rooms. The, uh, the large room is for the uh, capacity bank and another room uh, the around here, uh, C12, is for the uh, measurement, uh, the uh, experiment uh, uh, generation here. Uh, the magnetic field is generated here. And uh, Another room is needed to record the uh, uh, signal. Um, it is shielded room. And uh, in this experiment, we shine the sample by laser light. So we use a uh, long, relatively long optical fiber. And the uh, transmitted light is also uh, uh, is transferred to the shielded room and detect the uh, signal uh, in, in the shielded room by the uh, uh, mercury cadmium telluride uh, detector. And uh, the signal is recorded as, as a function time with a very high speed. Okay, so then I introduce the uh, uh, typical results uh, of our experiment. And this is, you, show, you see that the uh, magnetic field uh, increases uh, as a function time, with increasing time and reaches uh, around 500 Tesla uh, in this measurement. And um, the green line and the orange line is the uh, transmission measured uh, before the generation of the ma magnetic field. I measured uh, uh, before the uh, high field experiment. So at the high temperature, the green line, the, the sample is in metallic phase, so the transmission is low. And at low temperature, uh, it undergoes the uh, insulated transition. So insulating phase, we have insulating phase here. So at, at low temperature, so high transmission. So these two are uh, done in at, uh, with, uh, without magnetic field. And uh, the red line is measured uh, simultaneously um, at the same time when we generate magnetic field. So you see that at here, the small noise, you can see it's a small noise. Uh, this is uh, uh, the starting point uh, when uh, we inject the current into the coil. And, and then the magnetic field uh, increases uh, this way. And here, you see that the, the transmission start to deviate from the straight line. So something happens here. So we magnify this region into this figure. And you can see that the deviation of the, the signal uh, started around, around maybe around here. 
uh, 64 microseconds, something. At this time, the magnetic field is about probably uh, seems to be around 100 tesla. So higher than 100 tesla, the uh, signal gradually changes to uh, decrease, gradually decreases and accelerate. And then here, it suddenly uh, uh, decrease uh, more, more, uh, nearly uh, the vertically. So then we can know that at this point, the sample is broken and uh, the field is end at this point. So, but before the, this point, it smoothly change and we can see that this, uh, the level of the transmission uh, becomes uh, smaller than the uh, transmission at that high temperature metallic phase. So then uh, we can recognize that uh, at least this point, the, the, uh, the uh, uh, sample uh, becomes uh, metallic phase from the uh, sample transforms from the insulating phase to metallic phase. All right, so, okay. So I we plot the result, uh, the transmission as a function of magnetic field. So it more clearly show you that uh, at around 500 Tesla, the insulator to metal transition uh, is happening. And another point is that this is an, uh, the magnetic field, another measurement at a relatively high temperature and up to a relatively low uh, magnetic field. But we, if we compare two results, the uh, onset of, of onset magnetic field uh, where the uh, uh, signal deviates from the initial state uh, seems to be not very much uh, different. So I, I can say that the, the transition magnetic field is not, seems to be uh, not so strongly, strongly dependent on the temperature. I can't, uh, I don't have any uh, nice ex explanation for this phenomenon uh, by, uh, by now, but it, I think it's one of the information which, which we, we can, we should un uh, use for understanding this uh, mechanism of this phenomenon. Uh, professor, you know, yes. the, uh, do you know the gap size at 0 0.06 at a low temperature, the, the gap, the value of the gap at a zero field? Uh, so you mean that the decomposition? Yeah, yeah. Ah, okay, it, uh, around 100 milli electron volt. Okay, okay. Uh, so yeah. it's much smaller than, uh, than the, the parent. Oh, right. Right. Yes, 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 yes. <clears throat> Okay, yes, so it's uh, okay. Thank you very much for the uh, nice uh, question and uh, it's a nice point and an important point. Okay, so um, any, so anyway, uh, this is a, I, I summarize uh, three different uh, results of the experiment. And this is a uh, one which I already show you. And this, but the, the vertical uh, uh, axis is a uh, relative change of the absorption coefficient uh, divided by the change in the absorption coefficient between the metallic and the phase to compare these three um, uh, results. And uh, the point is that the, even at a very high field, 550 Tesla, the 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 uh, x equals zero sample is, uh, of course, it's a uh, vanishing dioxide doesn't show any change. So at this at low temperature, and uh, 0 0.3, uh, 0 0.063 uh, uh, composition sample uh, it seems to be in between. Unfortunately, uh, this time the machine didn't work properly, and uh, some of the gap switch doesn't uh, didn't uh, uh, work uh, correct uh, properly. So the, the field is only uh, 360 Tesla, but uh, I can say that this the small change uh, successfully uh, is observed. So if we naively uh, expect that how this change uh, continue, uh, of course it cannot be very precise, but naively it would be like that. So this uh, high uh, the transition field is uh, will be located around the 650 Tesla or 700 Tesla in region. Okay, so we, if we plot the uh, uh, magnetic field, which we can see the uh, change in the transmission, this is, a on, we plot here that this is an onset magnetic field and this is a, a, a 
position, uh, this is speculated, but this uh, position at which we can measure the uh, metallization. Uh, so uh, I think the onset magnetic field seems to be uh, uh, straight in on straight line. I, I, I pro the horizontal line is a, a transition temperature at zero field. So I believe that it correspond, corresponds to the energy gap, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the yeah, energy gap. So as uh, the, we uh, dis uh, quickly discuss, the energy gap should be uh, smaller uh, in the adopter sample. But however, if this uh, expectation is true, we should observe some something here. But actually, we didn't see anything. So it means that the the relationship between the uh, transition temperature and transition magnetic field uh, seems to be not very simple. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, but anyway, uh, I, we can speculate or simply uh, imagine that the what kind of mechanism is important to explain this phenomenon. And uh, I think that one of the most plausible uh, explanation is the collapsing of the uh, uh, dimers. So at a low temperature, uh, the gap is uh, of this sample, uh, the gap is as high as an, um, uh, 100 milli electron volt. But uh, it is but um, a bit uh, larger than the Azima energy uh, of this magnetic field, but it's comparable. So then it can happen that the, the gap closes uh, uh, by an, um, uh, and then the the, the ground state uh, becomes a triplet state, and uh, the the uh, more uh, itinerant nature uh, appears and. So then the vanadium dimers are uh, dissociated and the, the insulating state uh, uh, transformed to the metallic state. This is, of course, this is a very qualitatively, qualitative explanation, but it's one of the uh, plausible uh, mechanisms. Okay, and, um, and I'd like to compare my result with an, uh, a relatively recently uh, proposed uh, model of the uh, for the explanation of the uh, trans phase transition of the vanadium dioxide. Uh, they uh, uh, assume that the, uh, we have three important uh, components, electron correlation and uh, lattice uh, energy and electron phonon or electron lattice uh, interaction. And they assume that a very simplified uh, uh, energy band. And the uh, point is that they uh, uh, find that they found that the, uh, so sorry, uh, this uh, X1 and X2 is an uh, uh, deviation uh, the, uh, the displacement uh, value or, uh, of the vanadium uh, ions. Uh, so X1 is, the, X1 is a vertical, this direction and X2 is this direction. So, uh, so X1 and X2 uh, define that the, uh, the lattice deformation. And you, you see that here and, and here, the, we have a minimum uh, position and it uh, corresponds to the uh, uh, deformed phase, uh, monoclinic phase. And uh, uh, the uniform phase is corresponding here and uh, it's a, uh, it's a luteal, luteal phase. Okay, so uh, they found that at when uh, they don't include the electronic uh, correlation, uh, the ground state is uh, uniform, so luteal structure. So, but it is the in reality the real stress, uh, real vanadium dioxide. The the um, at, this is at uh, at low temperature, the crystal structure should be uh, monoclinic. So, but you see that at here, the uh, metastable state is here. So actually this is a, shows you, it is an, uh, correspond to the instability of the, uh, it shows you the instability of the lattice. So it's uh, the, uh, tend to, the crystal tend to be uh, deformed. 
but uh, but the ground state is still <laughs> uniform state uniform state. But when you increase the uh, uh, correlation, uh, uh, it is found that the deformed state, deformed uh, uh, state, uh, monoclinic state uh, becomes uh, more stable than the rigid state around, around here. So it can be said that uh, a distorted monoclinic phase is stabilized by the uh, 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 electronic correlation. Okay, so uh, and they evaluate the, the energy difference uh, between the uh, here and here, and it corresponds to with this value. Uh, the energy uh, required to make a transformation is uh, around sixty milli electron volt, and they also evaluate the uh, the, the transition temperature uh, by including the uh, temperature effect or entropy effect. And they found that uh, they can, of course, this is a model calculation, so it's not very strict, but uh, at least they can find the uh, uh, parameters that the model uh, give us the uh, very, uh, the transition temperature uh, very close to the real transition temperature. So it can, the model can be, uh, 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 can, can take some picture of the um, real picture or, or, or for explaining the uh, dioxide uh, phase transition. Okay, so uh, I uh, try to evaluate the magnetic field required for, uh, to uh, overcome this, uh, uh, energy difference and find, found that this is about 500 Tesla. So it can be uh, very different from the value which I, we found. And uh, uh, we, we just, I just scale the uh, magnetic field value, uh, evaluate this magnetic field value for these samples by just using the, uh, 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 the ratio of the uh, uh, transition temperature. Okay, so then I plot put the, I plot the, these values here, but still, <laughs> uh, it's the position is here, but uh, actually we don't see anything, so that's a problem, and uh, but at least we can do the more ex we do should do more experiment uh, for this uh, composition and to find that uh, to 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 uh, to confirm that it is we should we will see something around here or not. Okay, so by now, uh, maybe you see, you may think that, okay, uh, 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 we, we, we observed some uh, phase transition at the, the sample with uh, very, uh, with a uh, tungsten, uh, uh, with some uh, body, uh, component of, of the composition of the uh, tungsten. So, uh, in such a sample, uh, the, of course, we have a randomness or the uh, dis uh, uh, dislocation in the crystal, and such an effect may affect the uh, phase transition. So I think it would be uh, very important uh, to observe the uh, pure uh, transition in pure uh, vanadium uh, dioxide. So, but uh, at low temperature, we couldn't successfully observe the um, uh, transition. And of course, we can increase the magnetic field more, but it's uh, honestly, it is not very easy. Even our record is thousand Tesla. The condition is very, very uh, strict. Uh, and so then uh, first uh, I took the other way and simply, why, what happens if we try, if we apply the magnetic field very close to the transition temperature? Okay, so fortunately, as I uh, uh, already uh, wrote in the uh, abstract, we, we can uh, observe uh, um, a nice uh, phase transition in pure vanadium of dioxide at, actually this is room temperature. And uh, the, Transition temperature in the upsweep uh, 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 process uh, is uh, 300 Kelvin. So then the, the temperature difference is only seven Kelvin. 
So I think I can say that it is very close to the uh, transition temperature. So then if we did the, this uh, diagram is correct, uh, uh, using this ratio, the and uh, this uh, the energy difference required, required magnetic field should be much, much smaller than the, this field region. And only 10 Tesla should be all right. But actually what we found is that uh, the uh, more than 200 Tesla or 300 Tesla is uh, required even uh, this, uh, uh the measure measurement temperature is very close to the transition temperature so we need to uh, explain this uh, we need a more uh, uh further uh, we we need to further we need a further consideration uh what kind of how we can uh, explain uh this phenomenon so i think that it's very interesting <clears throat> and um, uh question I don't have any uh, good answer till now. And experimentally, uh, okay, we found that the, the, we we need a 300 to 200 tesla even at very close uh, temperature. And another uh, fact we uh, have already known is that at this uh, low temperature, we don't see any change uh, uh, up to six around 550 tesla. So, but it sh the sh transition should be around here. So then, uh, uh, the, our we I'd like to uh, uh, make I'd like to uh, know that that how does the uh, transition magnetic field increase with the increasing uh, with decreasing temperature, and it can tell us uh, uh, the uh, the information uh, to understand the uh, uh, all uh, mechanism of the field induced. Uh, magnetic field induced magnetic field uh, induced transition. Okay, so I can uh, so this is um, the, so the randomness or the some um, doping effect is not uh, very important. I think uh, I think it's not important. And uh, the the insulator metal transition or magnetic field in induced insulator metal transition or vanadium dioxide is. Uh, very intrinsic phenomenon uh, re reflecting the quantum nature of this compound. And, uh, and I can say that uh, the spin driven uh, uh, field induced uh, insulator metal transition uh, re confirms that uh, this the vanadium dioxide can't be explained by a uh, single band about the model. Uh, so we need a uh, uh, spin lattice coupling to explain uh, this uh, phenomenon. So again, I can say that the, the, the key uh, issue, a uh, key phenomenon of this, uh, uh, of this uh, uh, key key, fact, key effect of, of of this phenomenon is that uh, the the uh, the collapsing of the molecular orbital, I believe. So uh, this way, uh, the the singlet state uh, becomes transformed to the uh, triplet state, and um, um, uh, molecular orbital uh, is collapse, uh, and this is a, a, a key concept. Uh, I believe this is a key, co key concept of of this uh, uh, experiment. And uh, okay, so considering this uh, um, collapse dissociation of the molecular orbital, uh, we can think we can imagine that okay, similar effect uh, occurs uh, for real molecule in uh, cosmic space, uh, but in very, very high magnetic fields, uh, up to uh, 10 to the fifth, more than that, uh, uh, magnetic field. And uh, uh, in such a uh, situation, uh, it is a, uh, such quite interesting uh, phenomenon uh, is expected. For example, the uh, because of the uh, wave function is also uh, modified by uh, this very high magnetic field, the uh, the when you apply the magnetic field perpendicular to the uh, molecular axis, the at very high magnetic fields, the singlet state is cannot be an a uh, 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 ground state, and the new ground state appears, uh, which uh, has an a triplet configuration of their spin. And this, but the point is that uh, the calculation predicts that 
it's the molecular dissociation doesn't happen. Uh, the, the looking at the uh, energy the, um, energy as a function of uh, the position, the, it's not very deep, but the small uh, minimum appears uh, here and here. So then the molecule, new uh, bonding state uh, uh, appears in very high magnetic field, and they call that bonding is a, um, a paramagnetic bonding, and they say that uh, it's an, a, a new type of uh, chemical bonding, which does not appear uh, in, a weak, in, in a weak magnetic field. So I think I expect that uh, such a new chemical bonding uh, can may appear uh, in, 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 in a solid uh, in very high magnetic fields. Okay, so let me summarize uh, my talk. Um, <clears throat> so uh, vanadium tungsten uh, 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 dioxide uh, can transform to the metallic state by applying a 500 tesla cross ultra high magnetic field. And the molecular orbital picture uh, explains uh, this phenomenon. And the spin lattice coupling uh, involving electron correlation is like, likely to be important. And this thousand, we cannot reach the thousand tesla, but we, I believe we can reach. And uh, the 500 tesla and uh, more than 500 tesla, uh, the, uh, we, I can say that the thousand tesla class. And the uh, magnetic field, this, this class of magnetic field can explore the uh, new, new research field on uh, chemical bonding in matters. Okay, so uh, thank you very much uh, for your attention. Thank you, Professor Matsuda. A very beautiful uh, talk, and uh, I see a lot of uh, uh, interesting sets up there. A very tough uh, setup, <laughs> and also a very beautiful physics. Now the session is open uh, for the open for the questions. Uh, can uh, the audience uh, does any audience has a, has a question? Uh, maybe I can start uh, some. Uh, I can start some wine. Uh, so uh, I, I I somehow feel a little bit confused about the 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 gap uh, fifty nine MeV there. Uh, what's that? I, I somehow a little bit confused about that value. Uh, because at the beginning, so uh, the gap is very big, right? It's a six hundred. What what's the? I didn't quite follow. Yes. Uh, actually, we have two kinds of gap. Um, uh, the one is an, uh, just an. Uh, mm, I'm sorry. Mm, uh, okay. So we have a two kinds of gap. One is an, uh, uh, the the energy gap between the the bonding and the anti bonding uh, states. It's an Okay, so this is an uh, dx uh, originally dxy, and uh, another gap is that uh, the, the energy difference between the uh, dxy original dxy uh, uh, state and uh, the other uh, orbital. Uh, I mean the the, the uh, pio another uh, uh, bonding state. So we have a gap here. So uh, this is smaller. So I. Of course, uh, the smaller energy gap will be uh, important to uh, understand. So, so these guys uh, uh, evaluated the energy gap um, as a function of uh, the X uh, tungsten contents, and they found that it. Okay, so the previous figure uh, that tells you that the energy gap is 0 0.6, uh, 0 0.7, but this. Paper zero point six, but it, but uh, it, it's near, near. I think it's close. Anyway, so uh, it is at zero point zero point six at x equals zero, and it gradually decreases. So I think that this uh, uh, variation x variation of the energy gap uh, uh, is directly. Uh, reflected by the variation or uh, x variation of the transition temperature. Okay, so uh, but the ratio in, very, the ratio between it to very high, right? The still right, the the mm. transition temperature and the gap size mm. is still over a factor of I guess ten or more than that, right? Uh, you, you, you mean that the, uh, the compared to the, the, the gap divided by the the transition temperature 
right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. So, yes, you're still very high. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, one, more than one, more, one order of magnitude. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. So, you can't, you, you can't explain this uh, relation by uh, one, band, one electron picture, uh, oh. I believe. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so for the, I saw that uh, for your 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 experimental setup. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, you have the exploding, uh, the, the demonstration exploding. Uh, but mm -hmm. in the in the uh, cryogenic uh, in in the cryogenic mm -hmm. uh, system, mm -hmm. uh, so it's the explosion is as much as. <laughs> Uh, you show at the beginning, or, or it would destroy everything there once you uh, do uh, uh, each measurement, or, or yes. just partly damaged. Yeah. Uh, yes, it is completely uh, destroyed. Um, so uh, we have um, no. uh, cryogenic. I think in the cryogenic uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, system. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, this part is destroyed, and uh -huh. uh, yes. And uh, you know, uh, hmm, okay, cryogenic system. Okay, all right. So the everything in uh, everything I mean that the samples and the small cryostat coils are set in the explosion proof box. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, but uh, you know the helium container. Mm -hmm. And the uh, transfer tube, uh, tr helium container is outside. Okay, I think uh, yeah. of the, pro uh, the explosion uh, proof box, mm -hmm. and uh, so we transfer the uh, liquid helium by the uh, transfer tube, and uh, the the part of the trans transfer tube is destroyed. I but see. but okay, it's disposable. But uh, we but we can easily. Uh, think we can easily uh, uh, make that uh, that part. Uh, this is a, actually it's a very I, the photo doesn't show the whole part, but it's a relatively long, and it's a, actually the um, handmade uh, transfer tube. Uh, we this the, I mean that this is a two a coaxial. Um, stainless pipes and uh, the smaller diameter and the larger diameter, and between them, uh, the vacuum layer. We have vacuum layer. Mm. Uh, but <laughs> but uh, unfortunately, yes, yeah. In this part is uh, we 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 lose this part uh, by only one shot. <laughs> nice. So how long? Uh, you know, uh, uh, how long it will take for you to prepare one set uh, of measurement? It's like a one uh, month or two months, or something like. Mm, yeah. Yes. Um. Typically, yeah, two or three weeks. I see. Oh, that's very fast. Actually. Mm, okay. Mm. I see. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So also, can, uh, can I can I ask? Oh yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, uh, Professor, uh, so um, what actually causes uh, this uh, uh, insulator two mm -hmm. at higher docking concentration? Uh, I see. And yeah. is, the, is the magnetic field uh, uh, effect mm -hmm. similar? Yeah, I, yeah, it's an interesting point. And um, uh, yeah, you are talking about this this phase, right? Uh, that's right. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It, uh, actually, we don't know <laughs> because uh, we plan to do the experiment, but still didn't. Oh. Okay. Okay. Experiment. Yes. But, but, uh, but, but, uh, but uh, there's indeed. Uh, I mean, uh, actually, the, there is a sample. The sample is ready, right? Yeah. 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 We we already get a sample. Oh, okay, we already okay. have a sample. So I the, the, yeah, I, in, in near future, I okay. I hope we, I can show you some results. <laughs> okay. but, uh, yeah. should <laughs> and, be, it should be very interesting. Okay. Yeah, yeah, very interesting because uh, yeah, uh, this paper or other paper uh, predict uh, speculate that the uh, speculate or discuss 
that the, the uh, uh, origin of the mechanism uh, mm -hmm. or mechanism of the... And, and, and uh, is the uh, uh, lattice structure the same? Lattice structure is the uh, yeah, same, yes, yes. Okay, so that's there's a still this uh, within uh, this uh, vanadium uh, in a dimerization inside this uh, uh, insulator tube. Uh, uh, it's uh, questionable. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, it's still questionable. And um, mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yes. So I think it's not very confirmed that uh, uh, what kind of, how we can explain the insulator too. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, mm. Is that another question? Yeah, hello. Oh, hello. Can I ask a question? <laughs> of course. Hello, yeah, Master Sensei. Long time yes. no see. Long, Long time, time no see. see. Yeah, 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 very amazing work. Like mm. we discussed before. Uh, I have two simple questions. Mm. Actually, you are talking about the molecular orbital collapse mm. at a very high magnetic field, right? Yes. Is it possible to measure the transition, the bonding to antibonding transition at a high time, at a high magnetic field? Uh, if it's yes. collapsed, this transition will also disappear, right? Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, but uh, mm, actually, we don't know the, the what kind of energy gap. Uh, uh, I, I, okay. Um, yes, um, I understand. Um, you know that uh, maybe the uh, in in my experiment, uh, we observe the closing of this gap. And you are yeah. asking that uh, how about the processing of this state, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes, but <laughs> of course we need a higher magnetic field. So yeah. So then I think that uh, you know. Uh, okay. So this behavior mm -hmm. uh, it stopped just by an, uh, our limitation of the highest magnetic field and uh, if it con uh, we don't know how uh, it behaves after this so it mm -hmm. can reflect the the, the energy change in the electronic structure in the high higher magnetic field and uh, the, the the gap between the uh, uh, bonding and anti-bonding state uh, becomes smaller and smaller, and uh, the, such a uh, the effect of such a uh, change can uh, affect uh, the, the this uh, behavior. So the one you, for to answer your question, we need the uh, the to measure the uh, uh, the behavior of this uh, phase transition uh, the, the phenomenon uh, at, in higher <laughs> magnetic fields. So, Actually, another way, in another way, so we can, can you measure the absorbance mm. or transmission uh, at mm. different uh, wavelengths? Uh, this measurement is measured only for 1.977 micron liter, uh -huh. right? Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. If you can measure the transmissions at like uh, 500 Tesla, the transmissions at the different uh, uh, wavelengths from mm. UV to, to near IR, you can see the transition, right? Uh, the right. bonding to antibody at uh, zero Tesla it should have a strong transition bonding to antibody. If the molecular orbital traps, so this transition should also disappear. If at high temperature, you can measure the uh, uh, like tra transmitting or absorption is the same. So if you can see the trans transition is disappearing, yeah, it's, it will be a direct evidence for this uh, collapse of the molecular orbital. Uh, right? uh... Uh, okay. It's a, but it should be a very fast very uh, measurement. I, I, I think it should be very difficult. Mm. Yeah, this kind of measurement right. at a very strong at, at a, magnetic field. Okay. Mm. okay. So you suggest that, uh, that using the different energy position, uh, we can see that how the contribution of this, this different band uh, uh, tells us that uh, the uh, the effect of the uh, the higher energy gap effect uh, of the higher energy how gap. How it changed? It, it doesn't mm. need to close. How, mm. how it changed? Mm. 
If the molecular mm-hmm. orbital is a, mm-hmm. uh, collapse, this transition right. should have a very big difference, right? Yes. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Right. Um, thank you very much. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but the uh, experiment is uh, not very. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, one experiment, as, as I told you, that uh, the, it, one only one shot uh, needs. Yeah, uh, yeah, the time uh, is yeah, very two, two or three weeks are required for preparation. Yeah. And we have uh, many people, uh, with many stuff uh, we can do at uh, a more uh, higher speed, but uh, the. <clears throat> Actually, uh, we don't have not so many people. Uh, so anyway, I so I, I, we can we can try. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, we can discuss. The second question. <laughs> yeah, I have a the second question is about you think about the spin lattice coupling is also mm. big important role in this uh, mm. transition, mm. right? Mm. Mm. Yes. Uh, but the spin lattice. Coupling this uh, effect in the skill is around uh, how much? I, I'm I'm not very sure. It's around the ten milli EV, right? The spinning lattice coupling. How much is the energy scaling? It should be 20, 20 milli EV. Uh, actually, I, I I don't have any uh, uh, idea of uh, such a uh, qu- qu- quantitative uh, 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 value. Uh, quantitatively, oh, I, I, I can't I can't say any number. Uh, I just say that the uh, maybe we need a theory uh, to yeah. explain the how we can describe this uh, phenomenon. Uh, we need to uh, connect the 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 di- dimerization or molecular orbital picture to the uh, the uh, change in the uh, electronic uh, structure. Um, uh, in a more microscopic way, I think. Yes, yes. In, Let me need to be when you yeah, uh, otherwise, <laughs> otherwise we, we can't. Uh, actually, the the collapse of the energy gap uh, should be directly correct connected. Should be directly connected to the. Uh, 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 of course, uh, lattice change in the lattice, right? And uh, so yeah. the mm, so the uh that it's yeah uh, we should understand that uh, this phenomenon uh, in the viewpoint of the uh change in the uh um uh orbital or wave, wave function and uh, yeah. we should know the the how the spin uh distribute uh Something like that. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, in such a, a microscopic uh, model, we can define the spin lattice coupling. Uh, that is my uh, uh, imagination. Ah, I see. Great. But always the lattice spin, phonon, this phonon lattice, this effect is difficult to be involved in the calculation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and in, in, in magnetic field, yeah, especially in magnetic field, and uh, theoretician, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, hesitate to uh, make an uh, uh, calculation. <laughs> I, I asked several uh, theoreticians, but uh, in, uh, okay, the, if we apply the magnetic field, everything becomes um, yeah. um, not very easy. <clears throat> yeah, it's great to see you. It's great to see you. I hope we can. Yeah, good to see you. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, in yeah. the near future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Is there any other question? Uh, ex- excuse me. Can I ask a, a question? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, uh, I want uh, I want to know how you get the conclusion that the doping only changed the energy of the phase transition. Ah, uh, it's uh, I just say simply that the uh, uh, we I worried about the the some um, randomness random randomness uh, uh, is the important factor for the uh, field induced. Uh, Insulator metal transition. So in this case, the, I want I'm worried about the uh, if we don't see uh, we can't 
in principle, cannot, cannot have a uh, phase transition in the uniform uh, case, uniform crystal. I mean that um, uh, vanadium dioxide, I mean. So, uh, so that is my anxious. And then, but uh, we successfully uh, observe the phase transition uh, in, even in a uniform crystal uh, without doping. So then I believe that the, uh, uh, I'm confi now confident that the magnetic, magnetic field uh, can induce the uh, insulator to metal transition in vanadium dioxide. Uh, in this sense, the, uh, but uh, obviously uh, we need the higher magnetic field for the vanadium dioxide compared to the case of the uh, tungsten doped sample. So then uh, 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 my, I naively think that the, the tungsten doping sample uh, have a smaller energy gap. It is already uh, expected and uh, measured. And then uh, uh, it uh, makes uh, us to observe the uh, field induced transition at relatively lower magnetic fields. So then I, so then <laughs> that, then such a situation uh, leads me to conclude that the tungsten doping uh, uh, is uh, uh, tungsten, uh, tungsten dop doping uh, is just changing the energy gap. And uh, such an idea uh, uh, can explain the uh, experimental results uh, obtained so far. So that is uh, the reason why I concluded that the uh, doping is uh, only the change in the, uh, uh, and I, uh, I'm sorry, this is not the page, this one. Um, <clears throat> uh, no. uh, uh, sorry. Anyway, so the, the yeah, just, I, I just say, I just um, conclude that, uh, Tungsten, uh, tungsten doping is just uh, to scale the energy uh, involved in the phase transition. The, the randomness is not very important. Uh, that is what I, I'm now thinking. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Uh... Uh, Professor Matsuda, I guess the time is very late for you. It's uh, yeah. over 10 p.m. in Tokyo. So yeah, probably yeah. It's, it's okay. Yeah, <laughs> no it's problem. probably. Uh, I, 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 I'm sorry to get you so, no, so no, late. Okay. So I, I guess probably it's the time we mm -hmm. can stop uh, right mm -hmm. now. And uh, mm -hmm. we do appreciate uh, appreciate your talk. And uh, I think I learned a lot from your talk because it looks like a very interesting system. I did not really know, uh, take, uh, take too much attention, but you, you did so a lot of uh, nice readout and look like this constant double sample. A so lot of things could be done. Thank you very much. Maybe we just Thank say, you very much. Thank yeah, you very much. I just mm -hmm. say maybe we just, uh, sometime maybe we can, uh, yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, on, on site. <laughs> yeah. On okay. Yes, okay. Yes, thank yes. you very much. I, I see. Yeah, bye bye. Thank you very uh, much. Yeah. Uh, bye bye. So I already, I'm leaving. So thank you very yeah. much. Thank you.